So this whole notion that online retail is killing brick and mortar stores in Manhattan is overblown. Oh yeah, it's it's not true. You know, the studies have been done that show that online retailers that have a bricks and mortar presence are the ones that actually perform well. Online retailers don't really make a lot of money, maybe Amazon aside, but until they have a bricks and mortar presence, do they really see their sales increase by this sort of coming together of an omni-channel platform and a bricks and mortar platform. So speaking of which, we're seeing more and more online retailers opening their own physical stores in Manhattan. Do you expect more of that? And what's, what's the appeal? Well, yeah, the, the great news about New York, about Manhattan, is it's the testing ground for every new concept. So the first Bonobos, the first Warby Parker, the first Untuck It store, now you're seeing a Dyson product store. This is, these are the first. So it's the first of firsts. So New York is always the place that companies uh, venturing into retail that may already have an omni-channel presence in the world now want to display their product in bricks and mortar so that so the customer, the consumer, the millennials who want to emerge themselves into an experiential shopping experience can see the bricks and mortar version of the product as opposed to just shopping online. So it is not what's hurting retail right now. I mean, it's a factor and it might be one of many, but it's certainly not the death knell for retail. You mentioned that some of these are pop-up stores. This is always going to be sort of a gimmick, a temporary thing where a company like Snap will open one location for maybe a year or two and then once the marketing effect is over, they'll move out again. Or do you think this is going to be a more permanent thing? I think right now um, you're seeing many owners, you know, we talked before about distress. Um, I wouldn't say it's a necessarily linked to a sign of distress, but there could be an asking rent for retail space um, and a taking rent that a landlord has in mind, yet to do a pop-up store, they'll take considerably less rent. What it does is it, is it enlivens the space. It makes it show how shoppable the space can be with a pop-up tenant in the space. And oftentimes companies like a Snap or a Google and, and more traditional retailers in the past, you would see um, Oakley open an eyeglass store as a pop-up on Fifth Avenue and Flatiron or in Times Square they ultimately do so well that they want to commit to a long-term lease. So yes, a trend might be consumer-based product-related stores doing pop-ups, dipping their toe in the water, and getting a feel for what retailing is like. And once, if that's a success, they want to extend their lease or they want to relocate where they can have a long-term opportunity. What do you make of Amazon's acquisition of Whole Foods? Brilliant. Brilliant. The Amazon acquisition of Whole Foods is the poster child for the merger of internet shopping and bricks and mortar. So what does that mean in practice for New York City retail market? What, what's going to change? Well, I think that you know Amazon takes a long-term view in everything they do. So this integration may take years, but already they're in a close to over close to 500 retail outlets that Amazon now owns.